Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. As you can see, we are prepped and ready to do a first impressions. I talked about this on my live this past Thursday that I was really interested in picking up the brand new Tom Ford quads that just released, but they had been going in and out of stock. They originally sold out super quickly and then immediately right after my live, honestly, I think it was during my live, I received a DM from one of you guys letting me know that it was back in stock at Nordstrom so I rushed to pick these up which is very funny because I say I never spend full price on a Tom Ford quad because $88 for four shades literally murders me on the inside however FOMO really does work the fact that it was selling out I was like whoa 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 I need to try this out so I did get my hands on them if you want to hear about them then just keep watching Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And again, a huge thank you to my subscriber who let me know that these were back in stock. Now, these two on the Nordstrom website, that's the only retailer that I noticed had it so far. It's coming in and out of stock. I don't know, Nordstrom doesn't seem to release their entire stock. They're doing it in like small batches. When I checked this morning, these two palettes were not available. However, I would suggest leaving it open up in your browser and refreshing and you'll see it pop up. It's just in the regular luxury quads from Tom Ford page with the regular permanent collection. And you'll know when they're back in stock because the two names will pop up. And when they're out of stock, they don't even say out of stock they just disappear. So just keep an eye for them to come back in stock and show up. But I picked them up though. I'm really, really excited. So we're going to talk about the names and that deserves a portion in this review because there was a little bit of miscommunication here. There's like two names to these quads. So on the actual packaging of mine, metallic denim is going to be the blue one. And this is the one and the name that I originally saw it as on the sneak peeks online. And then we also have Rose Prisme. However, on the Nordstrom website, the name for the Rose Prisme is actually Pop Dust. And then Metallic Denim is Ethereal Blue. So I don't know if you guys are getting different labels. So this is either going to be called Metallic Denim or Ethereal Blue. I'm going to call it by what the name is on the back here because I like the names on the back better. And Rose Prisme is also pop dust so not sure what the situation is there but just to clarify that for you i don't know what's happening i believe these went a dollar up in price so originally the tom ford quads are 88 dollars in this case the quads were 89 dollars as if he wasn't charging us enough so that's kind of a turn off but let's take a closer look into the quads here. I'm not sure if these are going to be limited edition. I believe they're going to be a part of the permanent line. However, if you have a solid answer for that, let me know. Tom Ford is notorious for just discontinuing things out of the blue though, regardless if they're popular or not. It's very, very strange. Coco Mirage, I mean. So I feel like you just... You just never know. Let's take a look at Rose Prisme here. Now, if you don't know, the Tom Ford quads are made in Italy and they are six grams. So this one is definitely very, very light. You really only have a mid-tone here, no deep tone. It's gonna give you an overall light and ethereal look. Formulation of both of these quads are the wet dry formula, which is his most popular formulation. And here's what the swatches look like dry. Now you can use these wet, but you can use any eyeshadow wet, but these do particularly well with a little bit of water. So I'm going to quickly swatch them wet. So how I like to apply his shadows wet is I go in with my brush dry and then I use a spray. I'm just using Mario Badescu spray and I spray the brush. Now the first shade that I'm swatching here wet is a lid topper shade. It's his glitter formulation. Very subtle and sophisticated as far as the glitter can be. And here it is compared to the dry swatch. 
swatch. We're gonna go into this peachy shade right here. Bray the brush. These are brush swatches that I'm swatching wet. So they actually might be softer than you'd anticipate, but you can see it has a little bit more metallic to it. We're gonna go in for this really light powder pink, almost lilac kind of shade here. And I'm really digging into the formula just because I am brush swatching. And these are just really light in general. Ooh, this one is really pretty. I like how that looks wet compared to dry. And then finally, we're gonna do the deepest shade right here, kind of like a cocoa brown shade. This is the most pigmented one. I'm sorry, I know I twisted my arm weird here, but here is what that swatch looks like. So you can see the difference of impact between the dry and the wet. And without further ado, we're gonna apply this one to my face. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. I'm putting down a little bit of Jouer concealer, which truthfully, not my favorite concealer, but good enough. With the Wayne Goss number no. six brush, I'm starting in with the peachy tone right here. And it may seem intimidating that these quads don't have a matte, but I do find the Tom Ford formula to really handle that well in that you don't need a matte. The shimmer looks very flattering all over. In fact, it looks more so of a satin as opposed to a shimmer, which is actually more flattering on drier, more mature eyelids. So that didn't add too much depth, not that I expected it to, but it does add a really pretty wash. I do feel like if I put this all over, it would look really stunning. I'm gonna use the same brush and we're gonna go into the deeper brown tone here. See how deep we can get this. And you can see it's not very deep. I'm gonna use a Sonia G soft definer brush and see if we can build up a little bit more depth. If we use a brush that picks up more color, putting it along the lower lash line. I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed because I feel like sometimes with Tom Ford formulas, it might look very light in the pan, but it pulls more depth when you apply it. That's just not the case with this shade. I mean, it looks as it does in the pan, which I can't fault it for, but I was hoping to get a little bit more depth than I was expecting. Expecting. So definitely very, very light. Sonia G Builder Brush, and we're going into the light pinky lilac kind of shade. I'm going to apply this wet. Let me touch up and add this outer shade right here. Okay, and the last shade that we're gonna use is what I would call his pop shade. He always seems to throw in a semi-glittery shade in a lot of his palettes. And you can see it just adds a little bit of extra interest to the eye. It immediately shifts the palette from day to night, or if you're like me and you like to wear glitter in the daytime, it's just subtle enough. I'm not gonna use it wet. I just want to leave it subtly glittery. And here is the look with the Rose Prisme. I have to admit, for me, this one wouldn't be worth it. I don't necessarily recommend it. I do think that there definitely are people who will enjoy this. If you're very fair and you prefer just a light, ethereal eye like this, I think you will enjoy it. But for me, it's just not giving me enough. It doesn't justify the price. I wasn't expecting to love it. I thought it was pretty but I just think since everything is within the same depth here with very subtle tone differences, it really is hard to differentiate the shades between each other. For example, these two, unnecessary to have in one quad. And I'm very picky about the Tom Ford quads because I do feel like since you are paying such an inflated price, every shade needs to have a purpose and needs to have a place. And I don't feel like that with this one. So this is not my favorite one. I kind of expected that with this one. And if you're wondering why I continue to purchase Tom Ford palettes, it's because I'm very lucky to be in the position where I technically get paid to review this stuff. So it was important to me and for you guys, since this is so pricey and I do have so many Tom Ford fans to cover this to hopefully save you some money or to hopefully help you find a palette that fits you and your needs. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is metallic denim or ethereal blue. And this is the one that I was feeling. I was really, really excited about this one. Something I want you to know because I know Tom Ford actually surprisingly has a lot of blue toned palettes. This one is a lot more neutral when I was comparing it to the others and I will do some comparisons at the end. So this is actually kind of wearable. So let me swatch them for you. As you can see it is an all wet dry formula palette. We'll do dry first. The shades in here have more glitter particles compared to the Rose Prisme because the Rose palette, it's all pretty 
sleek, shimmery shades, no glitter except for the top one. And in the metallic denim, you can see all four shades do have traces of glitter, which I like. I'm a glitter girl. <laughs> so here are what my dry finger swatches look like. I'm definitely feeling this palette a lot more. Let me do the brush wet really quickly. So we're going to start off with this first one, which is definitely more of that pop formula. And we're going to see how it compares to the one in the rose palette. So here it is wet. Here it is dry. And here is how it compares to the rose one, which you can see the rose one definitely has more of a rose tone. This one has more of like a cool champagne tone to it. We're going into this grayish shade right here. This one has some silverish reflex to it. I love this shade. I think that's so pretty. Let's go into the star of the show here. This is going to be that denim shade. I hope it doesn't have a black base. That's my biggest pet peeve with shades like these. It does have a bit of a black base, but nothing, nothing crazy. And it does really go with the tones here. <gasps> Honestly, so pretty wet. I wouldn't want to use this any other way other than wet. Okay, let's do the last one, which is a sparkly, sparkly black shade. <laughs> oh yeah, big difference between the wet and dry. That is metallic denim. I have high hopes for this one. This is the one that I'm really attracted to anyways. I'm gonna do a similar application style to what we did with the rose palette. I'm gonna start off with the grayish shade right here. It's gonna be interesting to see how this looks in the crease given that it does have glitter to it. But you can see this has a lot more depth to it. And you can see the glitters in the crease so that might be something that turns you off i personally don't mind it and this is what i'm talking about when i say a lot of the tom ford shades pull a little bit more deep than what you would expect this looks pretty light and it's giving me some more depth than i was expecting okay we're gonna use the black shade now very sparingly i'm using it dry as well just right in the outer v here i'm actually gonna wipe off my brush because i don't want to apply any more product i just want to blend that out picking the soft definer brush from sonia g I'm gonna run this the outer third of the lower lash line <laughs> Complete different looks here. I'm going to take that same brush. I'm going to go into the blue shade. I want to use it wet. So I'm going to spray my brush into the rest of my lower lash line. It goes covering the black. Yes. Okay. Wipe off my brush. I'm going to kind of blend it. The problem with the wet sometimes is that it can make the eyeshadow look unblended. So go in with a dry brush and blend it out. Now we're going to go in with the builder brush from Sonia G. Same shade. Wet it. <sighs> yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna use it wet in the center of the eyelid, a little bit in the outer corner to cover that black. We're gonna use a dry brush. This is the e.l.f. Professional Blending Eye Brush. It's pretty dry, so I'm gonna go in again, dry, and I'm gonna apply that to the inner third just to show you the difference. So you can see how much more metallic the center of my lid is. Oh, this is a look. And finally, we're going in with the lightest shade here. I wipe my brush off. I'm gonna pop this right on top in the inner third. Imagine if this was wet, it would make a bigger impact, but I'm very happy with just leaving it like this. Okay, this was a very easy smoky eye to do. However, it is quite, quite glittery. The entire eye is glittery right now, so if you're not into that, run far away from this palette. I am going to do lashes and lips, and I will be back to give you my final thoughts on these quads, and then we will get into some comparison swatches. If you missed my Chanel Fall 2020 review the other day, you would know they forgot to send my lipstick that I ordered, so I did contact customer service and it just showed up, so I thought I'd show you on camera. I do have Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner underneath, and we're gonna try this out. So there were two shades that launched in the Chanel collection. I picked up the lighter one, which was low-key. The other shade was Mode, which was a little bit more red, but I thought I might as well try it on for you guys. 
That's really pretty. It's a little bit more almost corally than I thought it would be, but I like that. That's pretty. It doesn't necessarily go with the eyes, but the eyes don't match either. <laughs> so here is the final look. You can see I just added a winged liner. Man oh man, the wings that this Tom Ford eye defining pencil can create. It really is very easy to use. I don't even know what it is about it. And then I just did a quick coat of mascara. I didn't do lashes. I just wanted the looks to show for themselves. All in all, I actually like this eye. Now that everything's put together, I think it's a nice fresh wash of color on the eyelids. So when I was first applying it without the eyeliner and without the mascara, I was like, mm-mm. But now that it's pulled together, it just looks like a very simple, fresh eye. However, I really don't recommend it for the price unless you are in, on the search for a light, fresh eye kind of look. I just feel like no matter what I do with this quad, it's going to end up looking the same on the eyelids. I don't feel like there's much versatility because the shadow you know they are more sheer they are very light so I find that they'll probably look pretty similar no matter where you place it so I don't love this one it's cute and I think there's a time and a place for it but I don't recommend it personally based on my experiences I do however recommend the metallic denim if you are into these kind of shades even if you take out the denim shade which is obviously the star of today's look you can get a pretty neutral wearable look and if you use this dry it can be a little bit more toned down or you can pop it on the lower lash line you can pop it just a little bit in the outer corner to add a little bit of interest to the eye even use it as an eyeliner if you get it really wet or maybe use a mixing medium so I think there's more versatility within this palette as opposed to the other one so this is one that I do recommend if you are into the color story if you don't like these tones or you don't like glitter I do not think this is a palette for you I don't have any glitter fallout on my face really I'm sure that will happen in over time but I don't really struggle with the Tom Ford glitter shades at all really I find that they stay put but if you are wearing glitter it is given some will fall it is what it is but nothing too crazy from the brand so yeah we like metallic denim not as big of a fan of rose prisme glad i could try them out for you guys but to my mother and i we do have a pretty good tom ford eyeshadow palette collection so i probably won't do too many swatch comparisons because these two quads i do find to be quite unique within the line but let's take a look at the three palettes that i thought were similar to the rose Prisme. This one is definitely the more unique of the two. So the first one that we have is from the winter collection, not last year, but the year prior. This is Sole Diver, and they both give you that light kind of eye. Honestly, these three of the shades do look very close. So let me let me swatch them. The difference really is going to be this shade right here. That lilac shade is not present in the Sole Diver, but everything else seems quite similar. Top four swatches are Rose Prisme, bottom swatches are Sole Diver. Honestly, these are very, very close. However, I much prefer the Sole Diver. Do you see how much more pigment you're getting and depth and variety here? So they do kind of give off the same colors, really, but they are different and Sole Diver is a bit better, <laughs> in my opinion. I also picked out First Frost, which is a newish palette from Tom Ford, and I don't really find these two to be very similar. I guess I'll do some swatches for you, but they do seem quite different to me. They just are lighter palettes, but they aren't necessarily very close. So First Frost is at the bottom now, and First Frost is actually one of my favorite Tom Ford quads of all time. And it, you can see the difference in pigmentation between the two. You're just getting more with this formulation. Okay, so those were the only Tom Ford palettes that I thought were comparable, but when I did originally see the launch of the Rose Prisme, it did remind me a lot of the Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity Quad in Fleur Fantasia, which is the one with the lilac packaging. Just because there was a lilac shade and a peach shade, I thought they were similar. But to me, the Pat McGrath is definitely more vibrant. It's more fun. And I thought the Pat McGrath was pretty toned down. And now comparing it to the Dom Ford, it's definitely making it look more vibrant. <laughs> but these two aren't comparable swatch by swatch. But Tom Ford is definitely the more subdued version of the two. Now, surprisingly, there are a lot of blue quads 
quads in Tom Ford, so I have a few that I am going to show you. I do not believe this quad is available anymore. I am showing the limited edition ones, but right here we have titanium smoke. We do have the glittery black, but other than that, I think they are very different from one another. Here's another limited edition one, silvered topaz. These definitely are incomparable, and you can see this is a normal formula, it's not the wet dry formula. Another blue palette, just so you can really see what the blues look like in the metallic denim. You can see it's much more toned down. This is Starry Night right here, which is more navy and actually has a true blue base, whereas the metallic denim really pulls more gray. This is the quad that I thought of immediately when I saw the metallic denim, Double Indemnity. You can see Double Indemnity does not have the blue, but if it did, these would look very, very, very similar. I am gonna swatch these two. The bottom is Double Indemnity, the top is the metallic metallic denim. You can see the denim one. It's truly just an all glitter palette compared to the double indemnity which has the true shimmer shades here. So the dupes of course are obviously going to be the black but they are different. In fact these two would combine together well to create a look. The last one that I thought was worth comparing was from the holiday collection a couple years ago as well. This is Soleil Neige and I got a lot of requests to compare these two so I am going to swatch the as well. I'm just gonna swatch them right underneath the double indemnity swatches. You can see how all three of them compare. Soleil Neige is definitely, I gotta twist my arm here. So the bottom row is the Soleil Neige and those two are definitely a lot closer than I thought they would be. They all have those glittery shades. I'm gonna be honest, if you have Soleil Neige, I do not think you need the metallic denim. The metallic denim is a little bit more subdued. It has a touch more neutralness to it, especially since the Soleil Neige has this bright shade down here. It has a little bit more brightness. There's more variety as far as depth goes in the Soleil Neige, which I think makes it even a little bit more versatile because it has this white. But yeah, these are very, very close to each other. Very interesting. And there we have it. Those were my thoughts on the two new Tom Ford quads. I will always continue to be a little bit more hard on Tom Ford when it comes to eyeshadows, just because I think the price is, it's a lot. We did have one success. This other one, it's not unsuccessful, but it's definitely not my favorite. So let me know your thoughts on these quads down below. Are you going to pick them up? If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.